happening. Uh, the funny thing was, I'd assumed at that point um, that he was actually in Israel. So we had this very interesting conversation. Then I discovered at the time he was actually in Finchley, but he is now in Yerushalayim. And he's the new shaliach of the Jewish agency for the UJS covering the greater London area. And he was born and raised in B'nai Brek. And he served in the Shirut Loimi. And he also served as a nursing assistant in the surgical ward at the Berlinson Hospital in Petah Tikva. He studied international relations and geography at the Hebrew University and as a student started working as a tour guide at the Tower of David, and uh, the, which was the Museum of the History of Yerushalayim, and later on becoming marketing coordinator of educational tourism at the museum. And Yerushalayim is a huge passion and his life, and he loves exploring and learning about the city and sharing this with others. So. Great pleasure to welcome you this evening. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. Thank you for this lovely introduction. And um, I'm very happy to be here and uh, talking to this uh, uh, lovely congregation. And uh, yeah, like Rochelle said, I'm actually uh, living in London, in Finchley, as a shaliach of the Jewish agency uh, to UJS. I just uh, went home for uh, Pesach. Uh, but I'll be back right after Pesach. Um, so uh, today we are going to speak, uh, one of my roles is to build bridges between uh, Jerusalem and London. So uh, I'm very happy to talk about uh, a very interesting subject in my opinion, uh, which is um, General Allen being Jerusalem. And it's, uh, can you see the, what I just shared. Yeah, excellent. That's Lovely. Fine. So um, we are going to talk about this uh, very unique story of General Allenby coming to Jerusalem, conquered Jerusalem in 1917 in the middle of Hanukkah. So that's why it's a title, a Hanukkah miracle and a Christmas present. Uh, that I will explain. I'm not an expert uh, about the history, but uh, I'm very passionate. And in my time in the Museum of History of Jerusalem, I managed to learn and to be there while the uh, special exhibition uh, of General Allenby, General and a Gentleman, uh, in uh, 2017 was there. So uh, it was very interesting. So let's begin and of course I'll be happy to answer the questions and anything you want at the end. So let's back to the year 1917. If you watch the movie 1917 about the World War I, it was a very, very difficult year to be a soldier uh, in Europe at the time, no matter what nation you are from. Uh, it was a very deadly and very difficult uh, year, uh, but it was also uh, a year of opportunities for the Jewish people as well. Uh, this is Chaim Weizmann, who was doing a lot uh, in order to help build the Jewish home in at uh, Eretz Israel, Palestine um, at the time, and he was working a lot with uh, people who were in favor of the Zionist idea. And if you recognize those two gentlemen, this uh, Prime Minister Lloyd George and um, the Secretary of uh, Foreign Affairs, this is uh, Balfour, of course, from the Balfour Declaration. And in 1917, we have this amazing Balfour Declaration that it's a remarkable event in the history of the Jewish people in the modern ages about a national home in, uh, for the Jewish people in Palestine. And this was a message delivered uh, uh, to uh, Lord Rothschild. Uh, so he will be delivered that. Lord Rothschild was this very interesting guy, Lionel Walter Rothschild, not 
the first line of Ro the Rothschild who was the first uh, Paul MP, first Jewish MP in the 19th century. That was later, this is Lionel Walter Rothschild. He was the second Baron of Rothschild. He was also a zoologist. And like you can see him now, he was riding in his buggy uh, to Buckingham Palace with zebras. Yeah, so he was very uh, peculiar person. And let's go from Allenby, uh, from Rothschild to Allenby. So um, you, you mentioned Allenby before, there is an Allenby Street in, in Tel Aviv. And I think those uh, people definitely help make this year memorable to the Jewish people in Israel and around the world. So uh, this is General Allenby, the famous General Allenby, um, who was a very dedicated army man in his service. Um, and did a really good job before. And he was called on the rescue of the Egyptian expeditionary force that used to be in Egypt at the time, fighting the Germans and the Ottoman Empire, the Turks. Uh, it was a very, very difficult war, despite being always said the, uh, about the Turks, about the Ottoman Empire. They used to be the sick men on the Bosphorus, uh, as they called. It was an empire that just about to fall, but still, it was, takes a lot to defeat them. Uh, General Sir Archibald James Murray, he was the uh, leading all the forces. Uh, he was a very uh, organized man. But in this time, a new approach was needed, and he was replaced by General Allenby. In the other side, there was uh, von Kostenstein. Von Kostenstein, he was the German uh, that was responsible on the German ar uh, army in the south of Israel at the time. Uh, and it was very, very difficult battles to, to conquer Beersheba the city of Beersheba, uh, a lot of British soldiers have been killed. And until today, you can see a lot of graves and cemeteries uh, run by British um, uh, officials that uh, they really taking good care of them. This is the one in Mount Scopus, in Yerushalayim, in Har Sophim, Mount Scopus. Uh, there is even a grave of a soldier named Harry Potter in uh, Ramle. Yes, this is very surprising. I, I remember that when it was find out, it was said Harry Potter is buried in Israel. Uh, so yeah, the, um, unfortunately, it was a very deadly war and a lot of uh, British soldiers uh, got killed uh, on the land of Israel. So um, General Allenby, managed to conquer, well, after a very uh, few battles, managed to conquer Beersheba. And you can see that this is this monument in uh, Beersheba uh, today that uh, also mentioned him. And when he managed to do that, um, the, the road to Jerusalem was open to him. He was also helped by this man, Thomas Edward Lawrence, uh, that uh, you might know him as Lawrence of Arabia, played by Peter O'Toole in this famous movie. So um, Lawrence of Arabia was helping General Allenby in all those uh, battles in the south of Israel. And eventually, he was all, also arrived to Jerusalem in time for the ceremony. So uh, the people, th this is the British army on the way to Jerusalem. Meantime, in Jerusalem, you can see German soldiers walking in Jerusalem, which is very surreal to me in the 21st century to think about German soldiers walking in Jerusalem. But yeah, that was the time. And it was a very, very difficult time to live in Jerusalem at the time. It was like a, a very undeveloped place, 
the Ottoman Empire was very poor, very corrupted. Uh, there was no good service, no functioning city borough. Um, it was very, very difficult at the time. And uh, you see people in soup kitchens uh, begging for food. It was very, very difficult time in Jerusalem. It was an exceptionally cold winter, very cruel winter at the time. Uh, but it took, took time to the British forces to make their way to Jerusalem. Eventually, after a lot of um, artillery forces, the uh, Ottoman troops are getting off Jerusalem. Uh, this is actually an old picture. It wasn't happened before this uh, in 1917, but just uh, to show you some images, this, uh, those are the Ottoman troops getting out of Jerusalem from Damascus Gate. And in that night, the governor, Isaac Bey, uh, the Turkish uh, Ottoman governor of Jerusalem, Isaac Bey, is writing this very small note. Uh, basically, he doesn't acknowledge the, his defeat. He just said, we need to save Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a very sacred city. Uh, to keep everything, we are going out of the city and we are asked you to maintain everything and the sacred places uh, to our religion. And he's going and he's giving that note in the middle of the night uh, to this man, Hussein al Husseini. Uh, the family of Husseini is a very noble family, very famous family in uh, Jerusalem. And this man used to be the mayor. The Turks kicked him out from being the mayor and brought him back. And he's telling him, take that and British to the highest uh, British command that you can find. So right there in the morning, it was a very cold night, very cold night. And it was after the uh, first night of Hanukkah, uh, used to be that night. And he's going in the morning to the American colony outside the walls of Jerusalem. And over there, you see the person on the right hand side, this uh, man, his name is Paul Lars Larsson, and he was Swedish and he was photographer. Uh, he was a photographer, he managed to take a lot of interesting pictures in this time, in the beginning of the 20th century. And he accompanied him, uh, he wanted to take the pictures that should be a memorable pictures of Jerusalem surrendered to the British Empire. Um, yes, this is Louis Lawson. Again, he was very, uh, and they going together, Bertha Spafford, another woman from the um, uh, American colony, she's telling them you should take a white, uh, a white flag, you should do something. So they're passing by the Italian hospital, taking a, a sheet from a bed and making this kind of temporary flag just to wave uh, to the British soldiers, hoping they're not going to kill them. So they go in and running, and they apparently they met two British uh, cooks. Uh, that's uh, what the legend said. Their name was James Cedric and Frederick Hercombe. They were sergeants. And the story said that they were going to find some eggs for breakfast. Um, and eventually the Jerusalem surrendered to two cooks uh, in the army. But uh, those sergeants wouldn't accept the letter of surrender. So poor Mayor al Husseini uh, had to go somewhere else. And he continued in his way. But just interesting to see this uh, location uh, this picture was painted lately uh, after that. And, and now, if you go to Jerusalem, uh, very close 
to the main bus station, the central station in Jerusalem. Behind that, there is a small monument that said that very close to this location, uh, Jerusalem surrendered. Um, and that was the meeting, the location where those two sergeants, Harkomb and Sedgwick, met the mayor Al Husseini. Um, later, the picture would destroy it. So we have very few pictures from what is uh, uh, Louis Laus uh, Lauson uh, was taking. This is like one of the flags. They were putting two white flags on the side of the roads on the way to Jerusalem, uh, telling the people that Jerusalem surrendered. And later, he met this guy after his. Um, he was trying also to, uh, to meet with Major Bailey. There was another soldier who also refused to accept the note. He said, I don't have the right rank to accept that. But then, uh, eventually, there is Brigadier General uh, Charles Frederick Watson. And you can see him right here at the horse. And he said, yes, I'll accept that. And they are going to the hospital Shari Tzedek of uh, Dr. Moshe Volach is one of the famous people in Jerusalem uh, who established a Jewish hospital at the time. And he accepted them at, uh, uh, over there, giving them bread and salt, as the tradition said. And uh, eventually, this is how it looks like when um, Brigadier General Charles Friedrich Watson accepting uh, eventually the note of the surrender. But later, when he uh, found out, um, uh, they're going back to the city. They, they're going to, to walk inside the city. Uh, people are very exciting to see the British soldiers are arriving, but they are waiting to uh, General Shea, Major General Shea, sorry, who's about to come. And he's the highest rank at the moment to accept that. So you can see now the Mayor El Husseini is still waiting uh, to give it to Major General Shea at Jaffa Gate. Uh, these are the first British soldiers going inside Jaffa Gate and entering Jerusalem. This is Major General John Shea. He eventually came with his car, it took him took him a while because the road were um, some of the road was destroyed. So it took him a while to arrive to Jerusalem, and he ordered uh, Larson to destroy many of the photos. Larson refused to um, destroy the photos. He said it's a historical uh, half effort of the British people, of the British nation and people should see it. And he went to the, this hotel where uh, G Major General Shea used to be with his uh, soldier. It was the headquarters. But Major General Shea uh, sent one of his uh, deputies to make sure that those pictures will be destroyed. He didn't want any anything that will be uh, related to uh, defeat um, to people with not, without the right rank to accept it. And everything has happened where? In the Tower of David, in this beautiful fortress, uh, in the gate of Jerusalem. Uh, it's the highest topographic spot within the city, within the old city of Jerusalem. And this is the place where eventually General Allenby chose to read his proclamation and make this ceremony. Uh, from this location, this is from the top of the tower, uh, of the ancient tower built in the time of King Herod, Herod the Great, uh, at the end of the Second Temple period. You can see the entire old city. Uh, you can see the Mount Olives over here, the Temple Mountain. Uh, and along the history, this place used to be 
the kind of like the headquarters and a place with the soldiers, the gods, that everyone who uh, ruled the city used to sit over there. Uh, also nearby, this place called the Kishle. Kishla is like a, a barracks for, for soldiers, uh, a place where, uh, like an army base for soldiers. And you can see here the Ottoman soldiers um, are in this, uh, in, in the yard of the Kishle that was built in the early 19th century, uh, which is, and uh, exists until today, going to be a museum over there. Now in this yard, it, there is a police, uh, Israeli police in this yard. So this is the location that eventually two days later, uh, General Allenby in the 11th of November, not the 9th of November, is going to arrive and to make sure that the surrender is happened in a very, very specific way according to the cabinet in London. He's receiving letters, uh, telegrams from London who is giving him an exact um, orders, what to do and how to do it. Uh, as you can see, this is Jaffa Gate, uh, a look from the inside, uh, waiting, people are waiting, anticipating to General Allenby to arrive. You can see the clock tower above uh, Jaffa Gate. This tower is not existing anymore. Um, the governor of Jerusalem, the British governor of Jerusalem, uh, the, uh, the first one, he removed him, uh, removed it from, he said it's not appropriate. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what it used to look like. Uh, people are waiting for the arrival of General Allenby in the 11th of December. And eventually, uh, all the horses are coming and General Allenby going uh, um, down his horse and walking, uh, walking like foot, entering the, the city like that. And this is the picture that really captured everything, captured this historical moment that you see General Hallenby going, marching into the old city like a pilgrim, humbly. And it was very, very important to the British, uh, uh, to the Prime Minister Lloyd George, uh, to everyone in London to make sure in Whitehall that it's going to appear like that. The enemy was the German. So I'm going back a little bit. That's how Jaffa Gate used to look uh, a few decades ago. If you look uh, a few pictures before, you can see over here that the road here is open. This is the gate. But the road here is open for cars, for horses, and people can go by. But a few decades before, it was closed. This is the moat of the citadel. And there is a very narrow street. And this has changed because of Kaiser Wilhelm II, the Kaiser of Germany, is coming to visit in 1898 to Jerusalem. And for this visit, the Ottomans um, fill some of the, with soil, with earth, some of the moat and broke the wall to make a road that Kaiser Wilhelm II will be able to go to Jerusalem like a crusader king riding his horses and making, making an entrance, a proper entrance. His wife, Augusta Victoria, who also visited, uh, she wanted to make a monument, to make an impression on Jerusalem. She established the Mount Olive Society and she built an uh, hospital very close to the 
uh, Mount Scopus to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. It's called Augusta Victoria. It exists until today, as you can see in this picture. And over there in this hospital, there is a church, a chapel. And on the ceiling, you can see this picture, this image of Kaiser Wilhelm II with his wife, Augusta Victoria, dressed and look like an crusader king and crusader queen bringing Augusta Victoria this hospital, this church, as a gift to the people of Jerusalem. And that, that was the meaning for them, to bring the crusaders, to bring the Christianity back to Jerusalem. Um, and the British people uh, wanted to show something different, not to be the crusader king, but marching humbly to the city as a pilgrim. There was no flags, no British flags. You can't see anything here. It was all out of respect to the people of Jerusalem. They knew they are marching to a very, very complicated area that a lot of people has very strong, very passionate feeling towards this place. So they really tried to do that, a very uh, memorable event uh, with respect to the people. But it's not really working all the time. Uh, as you can see in uh, France, uh, Jerusalem uh, Delivere. Uh, so they put General Allenby like a uh, crusader uh, that eventually uh, made Jerusalem free. You can see uh, this, the herald, um, the picture Jerusalem is rescued by British after 673 years of Muslim rule and the picture of General Allenby. So General Allenby was kind of a hero of the Christian world at the time. Uh, it was very, even though the British tried to do that very modestly and with a lot of respect for a lot of people, it was very meaningful to see it. And uh, Prime Minister Lloyd George actually sent a telegram to General Allenby and he said they will appreciate if he can give Jerusalem as a present to the British people uh, by Christmas. And you can say that General Allenby definitely deliver. So later, he's doing a very impressive ceremony um, by the gate of the, of the fortress, uh, of the fortress of David, um, uh, Tower of David. And he's reading this proclamation in many, many languages to, oh, sorry, can you still see it? Yeah, we can still see it, yeah. reduced. Reduced, okay. Uh, so he read, and I wanted to read the entire uh, Allen B proclamation. Uh, so Allen B is reading this proclamation in many languages. He's, uh, as you can see, there are people here, uh, it's very difficult to see, but there are, Arabs, there are people from any uh, Jewish, non-Jewish, uh, Muslim, uh, Christian, any community in Jerusalem uh, was there represented uh, to make sure that everything feel that uh, they are, uh, uh, they are the, um, well respected. So in the proclamation of General Allenby, um, he's telling them that he wants to make sure that the sacred places of, uh, of Jerusalem are going to be maintained, are going to be uh, sacred and safe for everybody. Uh, so, and that's what he does. I mean, you can see now the proclamation was translated to uh, a few languages. Uh, I think there was six 
uh, there was Hebrew, English, Russian, Greek, uh, Arab, uh, very, very, very uh, trying to make it accessible to everyone in Jerusalem to make sure that this business will not be interrupted. We're going to maintain that all the sacred places will be kept according to the existing um, uh, situations and customs at the time. And here we can see uh, a British soldier uh, from India protecting the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem, uh, which is a very remarkable picture. Uh, we see here the rabbis and uh, uh, muftis uh, waiting to meet General Alibi. He met everyone uh, in person, shake their hand, and promised them that he will do everything to maintain uh, Jerusalem. And uh, you can see here that how this event eventually captured in the eyes of the people in Israel, uh, because it happens in Hanukkah, and it was like liberating Jerusalem. Uh, so it was corresponded with another coin. This coin was um, from the Roman period after the, the big revolt, the destruction of the second temple. There is a Judea Capta. The Roman Empire announced their conquer of Jerusalem. Uh, so you see the Roman soldier and the defeated Jewish woman sitting under this palm tree. And over here, you can see the woman is standing, breaking the chains, and it said, Yehuda HaMeshukheret. Uh, so free, the, the free Yehuda. And over here, we can see this Mika Mocha Ba'elim Hashem of Hanukkah of Yehuda Maccabi entering Jerusalem, and you can see General Allenby, Uvalet Zion Goel entering to Jerusalem. It was very, very uh, meaningful. By the way, here you can still see you can uh, see the British flag, which were not uh, at the main event. So Alan B is uh, here. You can see him with Chaim Weizmann receiving uh, a little Sefer Torah, a little uh, Sefer Torah from the people from the Jewish uh, Yeshuv, from the Jewish people in, in, in Eretz Israel. He receiving a small Sefer Torah. And it, this is the Sefer Torah. You can see over that the inscription. Um, for the General H. Allenby, Meshachrer Yerushalayim, Liberator of Jerusalem. So it was, oops, sorry. And it's, it's interesting that this present because uh, I think what uh, Chaim Weizmann and the, uh, the Zionists at the time wanted to show that we are the, the connection of the Jewish people to Israel is very old and ancient. And they wanted to, to show something like that as a saying that we are part of something that both of us believe Christian and Jews. And this is something that connects us to this, to this place, to Jerusalem. Uh, later in the Tower of David in the yard, very close to the Kishla, we see General Allenby receiving the medals uh, by, the, uh, by the Duke of uh, Cunningham. But I wanted to take it to another perspective. I mean, just look at this amazing victory. General Allenby managed to, to be so humble and yet receiving such honor uh, around the world as the liberator of Jerusalem by the British people, by millions of Christians around the world, by millions of Jews. Um, but if you look on the personal point of view, uh, which I find it very interesting, he had an only son and this 
only son, Michael Henry Heinemann Allenby, was killed in the same war in Belgium uh, in July 1917. So just a few months before Allenby liberating Jerusalem, and he's actually lost his son and heir. I couldn't find a picture of, of uh, Michael Allenby. I only able to find uh, a picture of his grave in Belgium, in this uh, place in Belgium. But over here, there is a memoriam of Michael Henry Heinemann Allenby, who was killed in July 1917. And this is in Haifa, in Haifa, in Israel. This is a very humble, um, small garden in Haifa. But as you can see, it has a really gorgeous view of the port of Haifa and this, uh, the city. And so if you visit Haifa, uh, it's very interesting to know that there is a small place uh, to commemorate a fallen British soldier who has fallen uh, thousand mi thousands of miles away from that. And uh, General Allenby uh, had a long way after. I mean, if you think the conquering Jerusalem was the end of it, so far from it, um, it took almost a year later to defeat the Ottomans completely. And you can see here, General Allenby, very humble in the back, not standing in the front. And I want to show you something to conclude. This is Yaakov Bendov, uh, one of the very first um, photographers in Israel. And uh, the videos that I'm going to show you might be the first video that ever been, um, well, not the first, but definitely one of the first one that been shot by an Israeli um, in Israel. Just a sec. Oh. oh, there it is. Sorry, and I share the sound. Uh, let me know if you can hear it. Yes, we can.
and here is the proclamation. Okay, so that was beautiful and I thought it's really nice to see some of the, oh, you, you're showing a uh, picture? No, that's, that's Jerusalem, the words of Jerusalem. Oh, the words of Jerusalem, yes, the, the mighty lyrics of William Blake, William Blake. really, really meaningful, I have to say, it also Very accompanied fine. me uh, in my shlichot uh, to London to build Jerusalem and England green, pleasant land. Um, uh, if you may, I'm just going to go back for a little finale to this, uh, to the PowerPoint. So uh, for kind of like closing uh, a closure. So this is the Henry Jeffrey Hyman Allenby, the first, the fourth Viscount Allenby of Megiddo and Felicito. So uh, yes, General Allenby eventually received the title of uh, Megiddo, which there was another battle, uh, um, another fight, a big fight in uh, Megiddo, which is a very meaningful to many Christians. So he got his title. And in uh, 2017, there was a special meeting in Tower of David uh, you can see the grandchildren of Major General Shea, and here uh, Lady Sarah Allenby with her son, uh, the Viscount Allenby, with the manager, the CEO of uh, Tower of David Museum. Uh, there was a very interesting ceremony with actors who play the historical figures that used to be there in the, uh, during the proclamation. Uh, you can see uh, the um, actor who played uh, Mayor Husseini actually shake the hand of uh, the grandson, uh, great grandson of Major General Shea, who eventually with the, with the flag of defeat. Uh, the end of Al Husseini was actually very tragic. Three weeks after this, he was dead at a hospital. Uh, from pneumonia, uh, while walking and wandering in this very cold day for such a long time, waiting for a British soldier to accept this um, white note from uh, the Ottoman 
uh, governor is at bay was too much for him. General Allenby went to visit him in the hospital, uh, but he didn't survive. So it was a big event with a uh, big crowd uh, coming to see this uh, proclamation. Uh, this is the mayor of Jerusalem at the time, um, Nir Barkat, who is now a member of Knesset, uh, giving the uh, symbolic key to Jerusalem to General Allenby. And you can see the Vicont Allenby is reading uh, uh, the proclamation. There was reading of the proclamation in seven, uh, seven languages as well. Uh, so it was kind of a closure, but I think what's uh, beautiful to know that sometimes the uh, people who actually made the history are in the side and there were Sergeant James Cedric and Frederick Halcombe who met um, uh, Mayor Al Husseini. Uh, they were the first to meet. Uh, this is a later picture of them uh, from uh, Mount Olive. So you can see the city of Jerusalem, uh, a city who surrendered to them eventually. So who eventually was the person that uh, the city of Jerusalem surrendered to? Um, I leave you two to answer that. Um, and I'm here if you have any questions about that. Thank you very much, Dovi, for your superb talk. Do we have any questions for Dovi? If you'd like to put them on the chat or do you have any? Uh... No. Oh, yes. Karen. Yes, I'm, I like that. No, I, I was just cupping virtually because it was very good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank that you. was nice you, Karen. <laughs> really, really enjoyed that, especially the music oh. at the end. It's more well, very stirring. Uh, just... Well, it was a very it, it was a highlight for the in the British history, and I, I thought it really uh, deserved a session because it's a uh, it's a highlight of the British Army history but also a highlight in the Jewish history, in the history of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is something that's very close to my, uh, to my heart. And I think it has been said from all the, uh, to be honest, I don't know, the, the numerous uh, conquests of Jerusalem, it was the most peaceful one. Uh, the most peaceful one, uh, nobody died in, in the city. There wasn't a, a huge battle, uh, uh, you know, everything was outside. There was a big war in, in Eretz Israel, but eventually the city of Jerusalem was not harmed and uh, uh, it was very, very peaceful and very dignified. Mm. Thanks very much, Dobby. Um, Eva, Eva, go ahead. Unmute uh, yourself. Hello, Eva. Yes, I'm managing. That's it, lovely. Thank you very much. It was amazing to see the old pictures and the and the film. Um, it is it is something very amazing, but even you know it's a travesty of history and tragedy how the mandate ended up. It just shows when when something wonderful happens, who knows what's what's next. Um, but thank you very much. It was a very interesting presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well. Judith? Go ahead. It's, it's Paul. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Paul, go ahead, Paul. Thank you very much, Job. I love the news. It was really great. I just want to know, do you know anything about the last cavalry charge by the Australian army? Mm -hmm. Um. I'm afraid I do not. I, I know the Australian army of, I, I know they are um, uh, marked in, in Beersheba because I know that Beersheba actually uh, um, was uh, that the Australians played a, a huge part in uh, uh, liberating Israel and liberating some places in Israel. So I know there is some presence of, of uh, 
to honour them. Oh, thanks. Thank you very much. Judy and Morris. Hi. I wonder, could you tell me what happened to the German army that were in Jerusalem before General Allenby and the British got there? Uh, so they, they were ruling there, and um, I think that von Kostenstein, I heard about von Kostenstein actually was uh, uh, good to the Jews uh, at the time in, in Jerusalem, uh, which is uh, um, uh, like, you know, not what happened in the Second World War. Uh, they, they were defeated. They went alongside the Ottoman army. They fought together. And when they leave, when they when the Ottoman left Jerusalem, they left as well. Uh, I think it was also a pressure of the German generals to leave Jerusalem because they see that they will be defeated uh, by the British. So they uh, pressed to to leave the city eventually. They simply uh, retreated. They didn't fight the British. Yes. Uh, well, uh, the, the war, the war fights in, in Megiddo later, um, it took some time uh, later. Uh, Alan B had a lot of war later in Israel uh, to do, but uh, Jerusalem was a very, a very important boost to, to the British pride and to, uh, it was uh, important. Or, I mean, the World War I was a very difficult war. Uh, nobody, it was very difficult to see who's the, who's the winner, who's, the, who's actually won this war. So every little thing was, was very important uh, mentally to show this, this kind of uh, success. And Jerusalem has this kind of uh, power um, over people, mm. I suppose. Thank you. Thanks very much. Priscilla, would you like to go ahead? Thank you very much, Dov. Your, the whole presentation was an amazing document. Um, I mean, the, the film, the original film by the Israeli cameraman, is that, where did you find that? Where is it, where is it available to be seen? Uh, YouTube. A wonderful document. Is it actually on YouTube? On YouTube. Oh, is yes. it? Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, if you like, I can actually put it here on the chat. It's an amazing oh. document. And in fact, yes. um, as a further aside to Paul's uh, comment, the Australian soldiers actually marched in behind Allen the British soldiers, because they're the ones wearing the very broad hats, the very wide hats. And the Australian commander was in fact standing beside Allen He had a very wide hat with plumes, uh, with, and that was the Australian oh, yeah. commander. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yes. So it, it was worth <laughs> like coming and speaking. That's how I happen to know that, yes. No, that, that's good. I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm yeah, glad to, yes. to learn that. that. Was the Australian commander. So they marched in behind, um, behind Allen mm. But he was a very, in, it, the whole approach to the way he accepted the defeat of Jerusalem from all the, from all the various communities was very enlightened. I'd like to know, I know he was told by Whitehall to walk into Jerusalem rather than to ride in, but I'd love to know if he, if he was actually told by Whitehall to receive each community and to have such a broad welcome, to give such a broad welcome to everybody or whether that was of his, of his own um, that was his own idea. I really don't, I've never, I've never, the proclamation I've never heard about before. Um, mm -hmm. And the way he, he greeted every community, that was a very enlightened viewpoint, but was it his or was it Whitehall's? I don't know. Uh, I don't know either, no, but I no. think it was um, uh, maybe both. I, I mean, I, I, I think General Allenby was a, a man with a lot of respect to, to people. Was he, was uh, he very... was quite a religious man, wasn't he? Was, uh, yes, I, I, he was religious. I mean, being uh, getting the title of Megiddo uh, was very important to him. That was uh, for his request. Uh, so it definitely meant for him uh, also to come as a pilgrim. Uh, yes. He said, uh, coming as a pilgrim. So uh, yes, it was. Um, uh, I think it was also part of, of uh, the planning of, of Whitehall to to show a very the, the British approach as they as they show it should be it was a very tolerant approach very tolerant. yes very tolerant thank and you. very respectful yes absolutely thank you very much it was amazing yeah thank you 
Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you, David and Jane, for passing him on to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's my honor, thank and you. I. Thank I you. I wish uh, I wish I'll be able to do it in person and uh, maybe someday. Yes, uh, definitely. A subject, it will be amazing to meet uh, the community. Yeah. Uh, I mean, isn't you have a very lovely congregation? Oh, that's very nice, you, Toby. I'm, I'm very proud that, uh, it, no, truly, it, it's an honor. And I really feel that uh, one of the reasons I, I came to my Shlichot is to build those kind of bridges. And I'm... Uh, I'm very, I'm very touched uh, to be here and to accept this. Oh, thank you so much. Do you have any more questions for Dobby before we finish off this evening round up? Okay. I just, it may be more of a statement, but first of all, thank you so much for that really enlightening talk. My husband and I, we spent many times visits in Yerushalayim, particularly around Sukkot time uh, when our boys were at Yeshiva, but we've in the, um, very near the, um, you know, the, the Migdal David, the Tower of David, not far from there, of course, you've got Mount, the, say, the uh, the museum or uh, near the Mount Zion Hotel, a very different story in, in from the War of Independence when, you know, there was that a museum that's showing how when people were, Jerusalem was fighting for its very existence and people had to be smuggled at night time uh, to the old city. So to hear the way that, the, the British were, you know, very welcoming in 17 is very, 1917 is very warming, but of course it was only 31 years later that things took a very different turn. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it was a process. It, it was a process and it was uh, definitely, um, the, the beginning seemed very promising. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately it took a very, a very different uh, turn. Mm -hmm. uh, later, uh, still many many of the laws that we have uh, in the state of Israel nowadays, mm -hmm. from the British mandate. Yes. Um, uh, I was mentioning the uh, clock tower that mm -hmm. was removed. It was removed by the order of um, Ronald Stoss, who was the kind of the governor of of uh, Jerusalem at the time. He was also protecting the walls of Jerusalem. Uh, Sir Ronald Storz, uh, sorry. Uh, so he, uh, it was very important for him to show that, uh, to maintain the archaeology of Jerusalem, he destroyed all the shops and all the temporary buildings that used to be around the walls of Jerusalem. So the walls would be, would be seen as uh, an important monument, uh, which they are. Uh, so that's something to him. Also, the uh, building in Jerusalem. Every building has a Jerusalem stone, very uh, characteristic to Jerusalem. So that's also coming from a, a British man. So um, you can still see how this period really influenced on, on uh, the life of Jerusalem nowadays. Mm. Thanks very much, Tom. Thank you, Sally. Any other questions for Dovi? No. Right. Well, okay. Dovi. Okay. Um, so, Dovi, we've been so lucky this evening to have such a remarkable talk, uh, together with fascinating historical accounts, but especially those photos and the videos, which have really enhanced your presentation. And um, it was very interesting to learn in a number of aspects, but also uh, knowing how. They, they were so keen to maintain the sacred uh, places. So thank you so much, Dovi, and it's been a real delight to have you with us. And I hope in the future that we'll be able to see you in person. Amen, so amen much. to that. Thank you, it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, and uh, you I wish you a lovely holiday and Pesach uh, Kashel yes. And the same to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hey. Hey. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, I'm stopping the recording, but I'll leave it running for my right. Thank you very much, our technical directors. Thank you. Anybody wants to chat, they can chat. Yes, thank uh, you. Stop the recording now.